Hi, I'm Paul, and I am the um, lead research technician at the How to Linux Research Labs, and I'm also the administrator of the Pop OS Linux Facebook group on Facebook. Today's video, I'm going to show you how to install the programming language called Elixir on Ubuntu 22.04. Okay, let's get started. Okay, here's my Ubuntu installation here. I'm going to go to the terminal here and I'm going to show you my NeoFetch screen to show that I'm actually in a Ubuntu session 22.04. Okay. Go ahead and clear on that and once we're done we're going to ch we'll check the version now. And you see it's not found. So when we're done we'll come back here and get the version. Okay. So for now we're okay there. Now there's, um, well let me keep the screen up here while I talk for a couple of moments here. Um, there's a, there's a four ways of installing Elixir. One is um, for the adventurous, it's, comp it's uh, compiling the source code, compiling from source and installing it that way and then putting the, um, the, Elixir, the Elixir binary path onto the path system environmental variable. So I'm not going to do all that. That's kind of like a lot of the heavy lifting and c compiling, um, you know, it can be hit or miss. So we're going to uh, bypass the, you know, the compiling part of it. We're not going to compile. Or you can download the, um, the Elixir project into a zip file. Then you have to know where to, um, you know, save it on your file system. And then the same thing, you're going to have to know, you're going to have to uh, determine the, um, the, the Elixir binary path and then put that uh, path onto the uh, the path system environmental variable so that's all kind of heavy lifting but the the advantage of that way is that you're going to get the most current version which I do believe is 1.16 now the, the two other ways are uh, we're going to use a, a, is using the um, APT package manager and let that do the heavy lifting now the easiest way is to just um, uh, use APT to pull and install Elixir from the uh, Ubuntu uh, repos. But that could be, while that's easy, you might, according to the Elixir documentation, you might be a few ticks behind the uh, the current version. So since uh, being on the current version is always pretty desirable, we're going to forego that. And then the fourth option is we're going to use APT to do the heavy lifting as far as installing um, the, the Elixir project into our file system. And, and hopefully uh, it will also put the um, Elixir binary path onto the uh, system, onto the path system environmental variable as well. And it's going to do this by pulling, it's going to do this by pulling Elixir in and installing Elixir from the official Elixir uh, PPA, a uh, personal package archive um, package and according to their documentation this might also be a, a, a tick behind the current version but it might be newer than the uh, version you'll get in the uh, Ubuntu repo so we'll see what happens so it's kind of a nice compromise uh, you're gonna get um, you're gonna let APT do the heavy lifting and you're gonna be pretty current as opposed to being very current and doing all the hard manual work yourself. So, and hopefully, yeah, like I said, we'll, we'll check, um, once we're done, we'll check the, uh, the version and we'll see where we're at. So, our, the, our, uh, our target or our, our hope is that it's going to be 1.16. So, so let's, see, let's see what happens, okay? So, we'll clear on that. And then, let's take a look at the, um, this, this app here, this application called Software and Updates. You can find it in the, um, it should be already uh, installed with your Ubuntu and you can find it in your application here. Now what, what I'm, the point of opening this up is that once we're done doing what we're going to do by adding the, uh, the PPA URL to our sources list, we'll come back here and we'll see that there's a new entry here for, for Elixir. So software and updates, go to so other software. You see what's in here right now. There should be at least one more in here. So when we're done, we'll come back and we'll verify here. Now you can also check the, your sources list by a terminal 
or a file manager. Okay, so, okay, so with all that out of the way, and uh, quickly, um, Elixir is, um, it's not purely interpreted, it's not a purely 100% interpreted language, and it's not a 100% uh, compiled language. It's kind of a hybrid. There's a compilation process. I've never really worked with it too much myself. Like I know Java takes um, this Java source code file, and you run that into the Java C compiler, and it generates an object, and then you pass that into the Java runtime interpreter. So I think this model is called um, just-in-time compilation. It's kind of hard to wrap your head around, but keep in mind that it's not purely uh, interpreted or compiled. It's, it's a hybrid model. It's a hybrid language with a compilation step and then an, inter an interpretation step. So it's kind of a, if you, want, if you were to say, is it an interpreted language or a, comp a compiled language? I don't know. I'm not an expert. I would say it's kind of both. It's a hybrid. It's a dual, whatever you want to call it. But I think the, the official term is called just-in-time uh, compiling. Okay, so... And then in, my, in another video, I might uh, create a Elixir source code file and then work with that just so we can see Elixir in action. But for now, let's get, let's get it installed, see if it's on the path, on the path variable, and so we can at least work with it in the terminal. Okay, so back with the first step. Okay, so I open my terminal here. I'm in the terminal here. Go ahead and key this in here, and I'll give you a quick little breakdown of what it is. Essentially, what it's going to do is it's going to add. Now, this is not a full URL here, but once once we're done, we'll check the sources code. I mean, the sources list again in the um, software and updates application, and we'll see that there's an actual. There should be an actual, a recognizable URL. Here, it's kind of like a stub version or whatever. I'm not really quite sure what, how you term it. But essentially, it's going to take the URL here, and it's going to add it to our apt repository sources list. So sudo add apt repository, and then we're going to add this. So you kind of work from right to left, or I guess left to right, whatever. We're going to add this source to our sources list. Okay. So once you key all this in here, go ahead and enter on that. And let's see what happens. Okay, that looks good. See, here's the actual URL here. It kind of expands it out, or kind of unhides it, or whatever. This is this is the actual recognizable, uh, you know, URL that we're all used to seeing here. Okay, okay. You see here, a fork of the um, official. Er and so it's also going to install Erlang as well, I do believe, which I think Elixir needs. So that's good. Kind of a two for one. Okay. So adding repository, it says press enter to continue. Okay, so you can you can give us the, the once over here. <laughs> Looks good to me. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter on that, and it's gonna add that that URL to my sources list. <clears throat> and you can actually look for it here, I, I think. Let's see if it's actually here. Yeah, right here. Okay, it's done. Take a look at it here. Okay, here it is here. And it might be in a couple other spots too, but you can see it's been added. Now keep in mind at this point, APT doesn't know that th that it, it, that this um, URL exists and that it could pull from it and install whatever uh, you know whatever project or application that it's attached to. So even though it's in our sources list, APT doesn't know about it. Our next step is going to let APT actually know that it, that it, this um, repo exists and that it could pull from it. Okay. So we'll clear on that, and we'll go and check the um, software and updates really quick. Okay, it's not here. Let's see what happens after. Now I'm anticipating it's going to be here. It should be here. Let's see what happens after I um, update a the apt cache so it, it becomes aware of that URL. Okay, so back with that next step. Okay, the next step is going to be this command here. Just a standard sudo apt update, except we're not going to use sudo apt upgrade because we're not going to upgrade anything. We're just going to update the apt cache so it becomes aware of that URL. Okay, 
So just the standard uh, sudo apt update command here. We'll enter on that and let it go through its process here. And at this point, apt should become aware of that that this um this new URL here has been added to its sources, and it could pull from it. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. So we'll clear on that. And let's see if the software updates entry has been updated. No, it hasn't. Maybe I need to close it and reopen it. Let's try that. So I closed it, reopened it. Back. Okay, that's what I had to do. I had to close it and reopen it to refresh it. Now you can see there's a there's a couple of new entries here. And you can see that's the one that was there before, so that's fine. That one's unchecked, so it's not really being used. That's fine. I'm not going to go ahead. I don't think I need to use that one. So leave that one unchecked. And this is the one that APT is going to pull from. Okay? Okay, good. Okay, now APT is aware that it can pull whatever application is on the end, of, uh, it, which is stored on the um, in that URL in its sources list. So we got one more command to do. And we're going to use apt to install Elixir. Okay, good. Here's the last step that we need to execute. sudo apt install. We're going to install Elixir and a couple of Erlang um, extensions, looks like. Okay, good. So we've got three packages we're going to install here. Erlang, a couple of Erlangs, and an Elixir. Now, oh, I said before that... Elixir needs Erlang, so this is going to give us a two for one, looks like. Okay, good. Okay, so once we have that keyed in, let's go ahead and enter on that. And it's going to actually prompt me. Okay, I didn't just start installing it. Okay, let's take a quick little look. Okay, some other dependencies and whatnot. These are suggested. I'm going to forego those. And it gives you a little list here of what's going to be installed. Okay, it looks good to me. You can look at this on your own time later. Okay. Okay, we're all staged up here. Everything looks good for us to continue to the, to the last step of installing Elixir. Okay, do I want to continue? It says big Y here, capital Y. I'm going to go small Y. That should still work. That's okay. So small Y, enter on that. And then it's going to you know download Elixir and Erlang and whatever other packages from that URL. And it's going to install it into our file system. And hopefully it'll put the Elixir binary path onto the path uh, system environmental variable. So let's see. Um, I might stop the video here for a moment while it's installing. And back when it's done. Okay, that didn't take very long. Okay, so everything seemed to be, every, everything went off pretty good. No problems. And remember that, that uh, command that we did at the beginning? Elixir dash dash version okay now it's giving me output here and you know you kind of wade through some of this stuff here this is the this is what I want right here so yeah, I'm, I am a tick behind 1.15 okay that's fine so we're just a tick behind like I said before um, the current version is 1.1.16 1 okay so typically I think PPAs are uh, pretty much um on the same level as um, you know what, what's coming from the from their their uh, their repositories online, so I'm a little surprised it's it's, it's um, a tick behind, and I don't know what like I said before I'm not sure what um, what version would be in the Ubuntu repos according to Lexer documentation, um, it's it might be a few ticks behind exactly what it what it is I don't know, so um, this is a good compromise if we went the compilation route. Or the manual install route with a zip file, then we probably would be looking at 1.16. So, like I said, it's it's a nice compromise. It's right in the middle between um, the the Ubuntu repos and um, and dealing with uh, doing things manually from source and the zip file. Okay, so this is a good this is a good comp this is a good place to be right here. Elixir 1.15, and then all you have to do is just um, you know create your uh, Elixir source code files. And, um, and and pass them in. I haven't worked with this, so I'm not sure exactly how many different steps are involved. Like I know with Java, you have to use Java C compiler, and that creates 
a bytecode object, which you then pass into the Java runtime. So I'm not really quite sure how Elixir works. Uh, I'll probably make a video on creating a source code file. Just a simple hello world or hello Elixir source code file. And then just seeing how, you know, what steps need to be taken to, to, uh, to run that into Elixir and get some output. Okay, otherwise that looks good. Elixir's, Elixir has been installed. That's good. Okay, great. And I think that's really about all I really have to cover. Um, you know, so I showed you how to uh, install Elixir from the PPA and then, um, you know, update uh, APT so it, it knows about it. Then use APT to install Elixir. And it, you know, installs Elixir into your file system wherever it needs to be stored or saved. And it puts the Elixir, uh, the Elixir binary path onto the path system environmental variable. So it does everything for you. If you did the other way, if you compiled or downloaded the zip file, then you'd have to know where to store the code in your file system and, and then how to determine the Elixir binary path and then put the, that binary path manually onto your system path environmental variable, most likely in the Dart bash RC file. Okay, so this is a good kind of compromise. It's not too adventuresome. It's not too easy like, you know, using APT to pull from the Ubuntu repo. It's it's kind of an, it's a little technical. It's somewhere in the middle. The only downside is that you're um you're a, a tick behind. Now, it, if you um run APT APT update and upgrade, I'm not sure if it's going to go ahead and pull in a new version or not. I'm not sure. It should, I'm not really quite sure. But if you want the newest version, then you the surefire way to always get the newest version is to, um, you know, get clone the source code onto your computer and, c and compile or download the um, source code via, you know, uh, a zip file or whatever other archive file and install that manually into your file system and then put um, the binary onto your path system environmental variable. Okay, so I think that's all I have for you here today. Okay, I think we're done here. Okay, so let's clear on that and go back to my NeoFetch screen. Okay, so that was how to install the Elixir programming language 1.15 onto Ubuntu Linux 22.04. Okay, I'm, uh, I'm Paul and I am the... Um, the lead research technician at the How to Linux Research Labs, and I'm also the administrator of the Pop OS Linux uh, Facebook group on Facebook. And if you use Pop, please join. Even if you don't use Pop, you're welcome to join. We we field questions from all for all different distros and and technology news and whatnot. And I look forward. Uh, I I want to thank you for um, subscribing and watching. I thank you for your comments and your feedback, and until my next video, happy Linuxing.